Hello friends, in this video, let us discuss about the short transmission lines. So we know that the transmission lines are categorized into three types. So the first type of line is the short distance transmission line and the second one is the medium distance transmission line and the third one is the long distance transmission lines. So the short distance transmission lines are those lines which are having the line length up to 60 km whereas the line voltage that is of comparatively low value that is below 20 kV and the medium distance transmission lines are those lines which are having the line length between 60 and 120 km, uh, 160 km, 60 and 160 km whereas the line voltage between 20 kV and 100 kV. So the long distance transmission lines are those lines which are having the line length greater than 160 km and whereas the line voltage greater than 100 kV. So basically on the line voltage and the line length you can classify your transmission lines into three types. So one is a short, medium and the long distance transmission line. Now if we see the wavelength of the power being transmitted so generally we know that the electrical power being transmitted over the line is the speed of light. So the power will transfer at the speed of light and we know that the speed of light will be given by C is equal to 3 into 10 to the power of 8 meter per second. So now let us uh, derive the wavelength of the power being transmitted. So we know that the frequency will be equal to the 50 hertz. So applying C is equal to mu lambda formula. So from here lambda will be equal to your lambda will be equal to 3 into 10 to the power of 8 upon 50. So this gives you 6000 kilometers. So that is the wavelength of the power being transmitted over the transmission line. So this is if you see this is the wavelength of the power being transmitted which is of 6000 kilometers. Now if you compare the generally used line length with the wavelength of the power these line lengths generally used are very small and for this reason for the transmission lines up to line length 160 kilometer the parameters R, L, C are taken to be lumped or concentrated and not distributed and such lines below 160 km are called as the electrically short transmission lines. So electrically short transmission lines in which the RLC parameters are lumped or concentrated but not distributed and these electrically short transmission lines can be further categorized into the short distance transmission line and the other one is the medium distance transmission lines. So in this video let us discuss about the short distance transmission line. So in the short distance transmission line as we have seen the line length is 60 km and the line voltage is 20 kV and uh, due to these reasons of the short distance of the line and the less kV of the line and uh, due to low leakage current the shunt capacitance the shunt capacitance of the short distance transmission line is neglected and hence we are remained with the R and L of the short distance transmission line on which the para perform the performance of the line depends on. So let us see the equivalent circuit diagram of the short transmission line. So the equivalent circuit diagram will be so I am having the resistance R and this is my inductance and if I say this is my sending end so the sending end voltage is Vs and this is my receiving end receiving end voltage is Vr and let me see Is is the current flowing into the sending end and Ir is the current received at the receiving end and as we neglected the shunt capacitance from this equivalent circuit diagram therefore we can say that Is is equal to IR because in between there is no path for the IS to flow and IS is directly flowing from here and it is coming out here. There is no shunt branch here. So therefore IS is equal to IR. 
So now by considering this equivalent circuit diagram, we can draw the phase diagram. So before that, let me say the Vs that is the sending end voltage, Vs is making an angle phi s with respect to IR. So for drawing the phase diagram, let us take the receiving end current. So this is the receiving end current as a reference and uh, I am saying that Vs is making an angle phi s with respect to IR and uh, Vr is making an angle phi r with respect to IR. So we have said three things, one is the IR as a reference and phi s is the angle with IR made by Vs and uh, phi r is the angle with respect to IR made by the Vr. So by considering these th three things, let us draw the phasor diagram for this short transmission line equivalent circuit diagram. So I have said that IR is taken as a reference and uh, moving from the receiving end, I am having the Vr is making an angle phi r with respect to IR. So let me say this is my Vr which is making an angle phi r. This is Vr and uh, if you see here Is is equal to IR. So let us consider IR into this is our R and this is our XL. So now here I can know that IR into R plus J into IR XL. So this is the imaginary component, this is the real component. So this will this component will lie in phase with the receiving end current. So this will be my IR into R and where is the reactive component? So this will be your J IR into XL. So this is basically what you get your Vs which is making an angle phi s. So this is your Vs. So if you clearly see IR is a reference, Vr is making an angle phi r with this IR and next we are having the current flowing where we have considered Is is called IR and therefore IR into R plus J into IR XL this component and uh, this whole Vs will be equal to this drop plus this drop plus this voltage and we have perfectly got the Vs which is equal to Vr plus IR into R plus J IR into XL that is equal to Vs. So, so we have successfully seen the phasor diagram. Now any electrical port generally has two input and two output terminals. If we consider any complex network in a black box, so let me say I am having a black box and if I place or if I consider a complex electrical network in this black box, then also it will be having two input terminals and two output terminals. Now such black box network with two input terminals and two output terminals can be referred as the two port network. So this is your two port model of a network and the two port model of a network helps in simplicate uh, or it simplifies the network solving technique. So this two port model can be represented mathematically as 2 by 2 matrices and which simplifies the network solving technique. So let us apply this two port model to our short distance transmission line also. So our short distance transmission line is, uh, this, is this is the equivalent circuit diagram and uh, let us place this equivalent circuit diagram in this black box with two input terminals and two output terminals and let us represent this two port model with the two by two matrices and here the concept of A, B, C, D parameters comes into picture where A, B, C and D are the different constants of the network and the A, B, C, D standard equations are given by VSC that is the ABCD parameter standard equations are given by Vs that is the sending end voltage will be equal to A Vr plus B Ir and Is will be equal to C Vr plus D Ir. Now let us find the A, B, C and D constants of the network. So how can we find that? So if I put my Ir to be 0 at one time, Vr to be 0 at one time, 
I will find A and B and next I have to be 0 at one time and B have to be 0 at one time. I will find C and D. So let us find the A, B, C and D constants of the network. So let us take the first case. So the first case I am taking is IR is equal to 0. That is the receiving end current is equal to 0. That means the receiving end is open circuited. So by putting IR is equal to 0, I will be having A is equal to Vs upon Vr when IR is equal to 0. So that means the constant A is nothing but the voltage impressed at the sending end per volt at the receiving end when the receiving end is open circuited and it have no dimensions as the numerator is in voltage and the denominator is in voltage. So they will get cancelled and it, the constant A is a dimensionless quantity. Now the second case is let us put Vr is equal to 0 that means the receiving end is short circuited. So then I will get B is equal to Vs by IR. So this is having the dimensions of the impedance that is the voltage impressed at the sending end per the amperes of the receiving end current when the receiving end is short circuited which is having the dimensions of impedance. So now the third case is let us put again this IR to be 0 and this VR to be 0. So by putting IR is equal to 0 in this let us say this is my uh, this is my equation number 1 and this is my equation number 2. So putting IR is equal to 0 in equation number 2 I will be having C is equal to IS by VR when the receiving end is open. So when the receiving end current is 0 that means the receiving end is open circuited and uh, basically the C is having the uh, uh, dimensions of impedance that is the uh, current in amperes at the sending end per the volt at the receiving end when the receiving end current is 0. Now the fourth case is by putting VR is equal to 0 that is the receiving end is short circuited therefore I will get D is equal to IS by IR when VR is equal to 0. That is the current in amperes into the sending end per current in amperes at the receiving end when the receiving end is short circuited. Therefore, we have got the D. Now, let us see the voltage and current equations for the short distance transmission line. So, if we see the voltage and current equations, so basically we are having that the Vs, Vs will be equal to your IR as we said IR is equal to IS. So IR into R plus JXL plus VR and the current equation will be IS is equal to IR. Now let us compare these two equations with these two equations and let us see what are the A, B, C, D values. So let me write this as Z that is the impedance R plus JXL. So if I compare now VR this is 1 into VR this is A into VR that is a VS equation that means I can write my A is equal to what 1. A is equal to 1 and next this IR into Z that means IR into Z means B is equal to Z and similarly coming to the second equation IS is equal to IR. So that means my D is equal to 1 and whereas C is equal to 0. So we have found these values. Now to verify the ABCD constants of a or the parameters of a network to be correct we are having a condition for the passive networks as AD minus BC is equal to 0. So let us substitute this value in this condition. So if this is AD minus BC is equal to 1. So if I put A is equal to 1 here, this is 1 into D is equal to 1 minus B is equal to Z into 0 and this will be 1 minus Z into 0, 0. It gives you 1. That means the ABCD are correct for your short transmission line and they have satisfied the passive network condition that is AD minus BC is equal to 1. So this is the parameter. Now coming to the voltage regulation. So if I erase it here, let us see what is the voltage regulation for the 
short distance transmission line. So the voltage regulation can be defined as the difference in receiving end no load minus that is the ratio of difference in receiving end no load voltage minus receiving end full load upon receiving end full load into 100 which gives you the percentage voltage regulation. Now you whereas your VR full load is nothing but the modulus of VR and VR full load is nothing but the modulus of VR and uh, for the VR no load let us see from the equation this is the standard equation 1 so I am having that is uh, Vs is equal to A VR plus B IR so if I put my IR is equal to 0 that means at no load so the receiving end is open circuited and that means at no load this VR we, have, we are saying that VR at no load so this is I am writing VR at no load so this VR at no load will be equal to Vs by A so by putting this value here I will get the percentage voltage regulation as Vs by A minus VR by VR into 100. Now we have found that A is equal to 1 that means Vs minus VR by VR into 100 it gives you a percentage voltage regulation of the short transmission line and now coming to the efficiency of the short transmission line so the, if the efficiency can be found in a conventional way so that is the power received at the receiving end upon the power sent at the sending end into 100 gives you the efficiency that is the power received at the receiving end upon the power sent at the sending end into 100 gives you the efficiency in other way you can write this neta is equal to power received at receiving end plus power received at receiving end plus i square r where r is the equivalent resistance per phase so in this way also you can find the efficiency of the transmission line so this is all about your short distance transmission line and uh, in some books you can find this as uh, this short distance transmission line as 80 kilometer so in some books they have given 80 kilometer and this as uh, 80 to 250 kilometer and this is greater than 250 kilometer now if you see or if you compare with the 6000 kilometer wavelength of the power that is the wavelength of the power is 6000 kilometer now if you compare this line length with this wavelength then they are of generally small value so you can go for uh, anything as you consider whether you can go for the 60 or the 80 kilometer as per the standards you are taking so this is all about the short distance transmission line i hope you understood well please subscribe to the channel thank you